Well, good afternoon. I'm going to give a brief presentation today about our new PMIS. I'll start by giving some background. Then I'm going to show some screenshots uh, of the new system, then a summary. I'll start with the background. In 1990, the FHWA had the federal requirement that all state agency must have a PMIS system in place. At that time, TxDOT had the pavement evaluation system, and the pavement evaluation system was expanded into PMIS. We, uh, we made some change, TxDOT made some changes to the pavement evaluation system. We went from two mile sections to half mile sections. We went from 33% uh, minimum sample size to a 50% sample size. Now the new Federal Transportation Bill, MAP 21, requires every state agency to have a, map, a, a pavement management system in place. We have, you know, we had several tools in place. We have the PMIS on the main frame that's not user friendly. Uh, we had Map Zapper that was developed by one of uh, the employees of the pavement branch who retired and were struggling to support uh, Map Zapper. And we had some standalone applications for viewing the right of way images. So we wanted to develop a comprehensive system that will be inclusive of everything that you can have, you, you can do your analysis, you can run reports, you can view your right of way images. We wanted a system that's going to be user friendly, web access, and also to be able to do advanced analytics for uh, pavement management. The project was awarded last year to Agile Assets Consultant, which is one of the leading companies in uh, software for infrastructure management. It's a two-year contract. We're just almost finished with the first year, and we're about to go live with some pilot districts, and we're going to go live statewide in 2017. In the next few slides, I'm going to show some screenshots of the new system. This is the login screen, and the user is going to log in with the same login that he uses for everything in, uh, for text.dot applications, like the Novel login. We're going to have different levels of access. You know, we have you know uh, the pavement preservation branch is going to be the system administrator. They're going to be advanced users. They're going to be the regular users, and based on the level of access, that you know how they will give you certain rights. And we're using the same rights that we have right now for the PMIS on the mainframe. The next slide shows kind of the screen menu of the system. Once you log in, you're going to get these kind of database analysis, reports, setup, utilities, and GIS. Under the database, you're gonna, we're going to have several databases. We'll have several tables. You're going to have the condition data, the con some construction data, and we're going to also interface with Chris, the crash information system, and we're going to have the file build, and then the inventory, which is the information that we get from our TRM, and the static tables. These are the tables that we archive from previous years. Under condition data, we're going to have the condition summary data, rod data, ride data, skid data, structural strength data if you collected network level FWD, and automated distress data. These tables existed on the mainframe, and these tables also existed uh, in the access database for Map Zapper, but they were not easily accessible. With the new system, you're going to be able to access this data much easier. This is kind of a screenshot of uh, the condition summary table. And it's going to have all the information for scores, raw data. Some of the new things that we're adding, you see this show condition history. So for a specific sections, you can see the scores for this specific sections for the last 20 years. And you see here this image link you're going to be able to see the right-of-way images for this specific section. Also, when you, 
put your mouse or on any column and you right click, you get this menu that you see on the screen. And in this menu, you can sort, you can filter, you can filter by a certain value, and you can, if you have some amount of data that's highlighted, you can show it on a Bing map, and you can export the data also to Excel. The system also will give you the option to graph the data down the road where you can identify the limits. You can input like from this reference marker to this reference marker, and you can select the parameter that you want to graph. So you can graph the condition scores, you can graph the distress scores, and you can graph them also for multiple years. You know, here you can select you know, the years that you want to map. You can select more than one year. And here you can select what you want to graph. So this can give you quick information if you want to get, know where the areas that have problems. And this data also can be exported to Excel. This is also another example of graphing down the road where you can kind of look, you know, you can look at different fields, different parameters. You can look at IRI, you can look at SKID scores, etc., And you can look for multiple years. The next set of data is the construction data. And we are, the new system is going to interface directly with Compass. So we're trying to kind of populate, extract the work history, the maintenance work history directly from Compass. We're also working with CTR. We're trying to populate the construction data using Site Manager and using DSS and some of the as-built plans online. So this is an example of work history of the data that we import from Compass. So you can see, you know, if this is the work that we identify, here it will show the roadway, the limits, and here it's going to show the kind of the type of work. Here it's also, I think, here kind of pothole repair. So you can track your maintenance work on any segment, and we're going to automatically kind of load the data from Compass. We're also working with CTR to export some data of some construction work history. We have limited sample in the system right now, but we're hoping to populate, it, to populate more and add more. So right now here, you can see the different layers for a pavement structure. You can see some of the thicknesses, and all of this data is coming from Site Manager, and here you can see the highway and the limits. We're going to interface with Chris, and we worked with the materials and pavement section, and we're going to, the Chris is going to provide us a file that we're going to load into the system, so you can access your accident data from within the system. This is the file build, this uh, tables, this is the process that our branch goes through every year. We create the database that we store in it, the data for, this, for the coming new year. And the inventory database have the fields populated from the TRM grid. It has information like surface width, number of lanes, ADT, etc. all the kind of the inventory information. The static tables, these are the archive tables from the previous years. This slide shows the, uh, the analysis, a screenshot of the analysis. The system is going to interface with DCIS and Compass. So the four-year plans are going to be downloaded from DCIS and Compass, and they're going to go into a staging table. And this staging table, the user is going to do edits or corrections for the four-year plan, and then they're going to move to another table the four year for Compass and the four year for DCIS. And eventually these projects are gonna be put in what we call the master work plan. And you can be, do analysis for the four year plans and run different scenarios. We're using uh, the performance models that were developed by TTI from a research project. Currently, we don't have this capability 
This system will allow us to evaluate our four-year plans. The districts can modify their project list and run the analysis and see how this will affect their scores. This next slide shows the kind of the optimization uh, part of the analysis. Optimization is something that sometimes we use this word kind of generally. But optimization is a mathematical way of finding the maximum uh, of a function or a minimum. And you have to define an objective and a constraint. So in our cases, we're trying to maximize sections with condition score above 70, which is our performance measure. Our constraints are the available budget or the available money that we have. We don't have money to fix all the roads. So the optimization is going to use the predetermined project from the four-year plans. And in the four-year plans, sometimes for years three and four, the funds is unallocated. You know? So the system will recommend some projects for years three and four based on this money that we, in the four-year plan that says X amount of dollars countywide or uh, maintenance sections, et cetera. It's going to be a tool, you know, people can use it, people can look at what the system is recommending, they can, you know, use part of it, ignore it, but it will give them an options or something to think about or consider. In general, the analysis module will give us capabilities that we struggle right now with will be able to answer a lot of questions that we get from the administration that sometimes it's really hard, is how much money do we need to achieve a condition score of our performance target of 90% roadways with a condition score above 70? Or how much are gonna be our scores based on our current funding levels? And we'll be able to run different funding scenarios, different projects, and evaluate the impact the next set of slides, I'm going to show some screenshots of the reports. You know, we are trying to include all the reports that we currently have on the main frame and in Map Zapper. Some of them are not going to be exactly the same, but we're trying even to organize them in the same way they're organized in the main frame. There are going to be three types of reports. There is going to be public, private, and shared. You know, if a user can create his own report, you know, and share it in the private, he's the only one going to use, see this report. And shared, he can give access to limited number. But all of our standard reports are going to be public and available to all the users. These are some examples of kind of uh, some of the reports, like we see here, the percent lane miles, kind of good or better for... 2011 for multiple years for the different highways, different pavement types, et cetera. And these are some of the raw data, you know, like, you know, uh, patches, failures, block, alligator long, and your scores. The next screen kind of shows also kind of uh, if you're trying to run a report to know the percent lane miles, good or better in your district, you know, you have here a drop down menu to select the year. Here, a drop down menu to select your district. You know, if you leave this field as blank, the default is going to be right now our standard, which is condition score above 70. But if you want to look at it at different values, you can input different value here and run the report. This report is called kind of the critical scores uh, report. This report was on Map Zapper, but I think this report is going to be more visible and people are going to use it uh, more. I like this report because you can run and slice the data in different ways. And here's like an example, you know, I kind of for a district like Houston, you know, if you look at sections with a condition score that's substandard between 1 and 69 and the stress score between 80 and 100, that can kind of tell you all the sections that are structurally sound, but you have problems because of ride. You can also run a scenario for pavements that have 
good conditions, like you can set here the condition score between like 70 and 100, but have low skid scores. You can go here on skid score and run skid score from 1 to 10 or 15. So now you identify the sections that have very good condition, but you have problems with skid. And you can run different scenarios. We're going to have several reports. You know, the user is going to be able to run reports, lane miles by pavement scores, by lane width, by shoulder width, by pavement type, general or broad, frontage roads, etc. And we're going to have also some mapping capabilities within the system. Uh, you know, this is kind of a screenshot of the mapping. You know, here you can open a map, save a map print the map, and here is going to be a catalog for the different mapping layers. In general, I think TextDot is going to have a state-of-the-art pavement management system. It's going to be a comprehensive system that's going to be more user-friendly, that people are going to be able to access right-of-way images, run reports, run analysis within the system, and we'll have also advanced analytical tools. That concludes my presentation. Yes. The system is going to be only available to text dot. Uh, the question is, are you going to allow everyone to have access to the CRIS data? Well, the we can limit the number of users, or we can limit access to whatever, you know, is needed. You know, we can limit access to certain data, but... For right now, the, the, the regular users, a lot of the district pavement engineers and directors of maintenance like to look at the skid data and CRIS data kind of correlated or sections with poor conditions and accident. So, but in general, the system, only text.people people will have access to the system. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, the question, uh, you said that you're gonna, the system is going to go live in 2017, and what do we do right now if we have problems with MapZapper? Well, uh, right now, the users can use MapZapper through a Citrix account, and uh, it's, n it's not like what it was. Once the system goes live, we're going to sunset MapZapper. Uh, because we're not able to support it. it do, it's not compatible with our current versions of uh, Office and Windows. We're going to go the, with the new system. We're going to pilot with uh, five districts for 2016, and through the rest of the 2016, we're going to do training for all the districts uh, so that we're going to have statewide implementation in 2017. Thank you.